Hey everyone, welcome to another top 10 list. This week's top 10 list involves a single person. Uh, that would be General F.E. Spinner. F.E. Spinner was the Secretary of the Treasury from 1861 all the way to 1875. Uh, 1862 is when we first started printing notes, and because of the Civil War, uh, we also started printing fractional currency, which means that uh, General F.E. Spinner's signature appears on more different types of notes than just about anybody's signature. Um, there are quite a few different notes that you can find his signature on. And why does that make a big deal? Well, because some people would say that General F.E. Spinner's signature was a little bit extra. Um, he tended to use a calligraphy pen when signing his name, which made his signature much more flamboyant than any other signature. And even if you couldn't read his signature, you can identify his signature just because of the pen strokes that he used. So I decided I was going to put together a top 10 list featuring notes that I have that feature uh, Spinner's signature. So let's get started with that. <clears throat> Number 10 on the list. Number 10 uh, is one of my more interesting notes. Unfortunately, it's not real. You can see it's actually stamped counterfeit. And what this is, is this is a contemporary counterfeit of a $1 legal tender from 1862. And if you look, you can see a regular signature right here. <clears throat> and then below it, you can see F.E. Spinner. S-P-I-N-N. -N. You can see his signature right here. And obviously those strokes with a calligraphy pen stand out greatly compared to the regular signature there. So that was number 10 on the list, uh, a contemporary counterfeit of an 1862 featuring um, General Spinner's signature. Now there are, like I said, quite a few notes that have his signature. So these are just the top 10 that are in my collection. And, uh, well, let's face it, in that time period, there's a lot of really expensive notes. Number nine on the list. One of the fractionals. Uh, this <clears throat> this particular one is the Stanton Fractional, uh, and it features uh, the Secretary of War, Stanton. Uh, he was the Secretary of War under Abraham Lincoln. So during the Civil War, that's who it was. Um, and he would call the greatest beard on currency. But when you look closer, there is Spinner's signature. Now, the fractional currency started off as what was uh, considered, well, to be honest, it started off as encased postage stamps, which means they literally took stamps and put them in a metal circular uh, disc so that it would resemble coins and they would spend stamps like coins. This came, uh, this gave root to the idea of having postal currency, which would be currency that is smaller than the regular stuff but would replace change. And from there, it went to fractional currency. Now, I want to say that it didn't get called fractional currency until the third issue. And if I remember right, it was the third issue out of, out of a total of five, uh, where not only fractional currency became the term, but when you'd start to see the signatures on fractional currency. So I, if I remember right, this is a third series fractional. And, of course, it does have Spinner's signature. So that's number nine, uh, the Stanton 50-cent fractional. Number eight on the list. Some of you may think it's a little early to bring this one out, but this uh, is the third issue 50-cent Spinner fractional currency. Uh, the 50-cent fractional currency obviously features Spinner's signature, but more importantly, this also features Spinner. That's the guy. That's the real dude right there. So if you want to know what Spinner looked like, not only did he sign all the bills, he even put his face on a bill. So that's pretty impressive. Um, when you're making all the different notes that was that were going out at that particular time, you do start to run out of ideas on who to put on there. And, well, if you've got the power to do it, if your signature is going on there, why not put your face on there as well? That is the third issue, 50 cent fractional Spinner uh, currency uh, with his signature and his face. That is number eight on the list. Number seven. 
This is a cool, cool note. From 1869, we have a $1 legal tender. This is one of the rainbow notes. You can see the rainbow color starts with blue fading to yellowish and then to the green. You've got the red seal on there. You have the deep green on the back. Uh, of course, with the black, so much color, so many different colors on this particular bill. That rainbow look was only done in the 19 er, in the 1869 series. This is a legal tender, not a silver certificate or anything like that. So this note comes to be because a law was passed saying so much currency had to be out there. Now looking closely, there is Spinner's signature once again, very distinct signature, and uh, available on this note. The legal tenders hard to come by, uh, especially in in better condition. This one's decent, so I'm happy with this one um but if you're gonna buy uh, a rainbow or any of the notes in that series make sure you can see the rainbow because a note like this without the rainbow this particular design went all the way through 1917 and you can get the 1917 version of this fairly cheap but if you're gonna fork out i think i paid i think i paid over 800 dollars for this particular note and it's probably worth over a grand now uh, but if you're gonna pay that kind of money you're paying for the rainbow. So if you're going to pay for the rainbow, make sure you can see the rainbow. That doesn't mean that you can't find lesser condition notes like this. I'm simply stressing, even if the note is in lesser condition, make sure you can see that color anywhere on there because that's what you're paying for. You're paying for the rainbow effect on there. So that that's just my suggestion on this. It doesn't have to be a 63 or a 65. You can get an 8. As long as you can see the rainbow. That's all I'm saying. All right, uh, that one is number 1098, number 7, the 1869 $1 legal tender. Number 6. This is a fourth issue 50 cent fractional. Um, one of my favorite fractionals because it has Abraham Lincoln on it. This was the first note produced that had Lincoln's picture after his death. Um... This, I want to say, is 1869. I'm pretty sure it was 1869 that this one came out. Um, 50 cent fractional note. Of course, there is Spinner's signature on it right there. Um, yeah, if you're going to get fractionals, there's a handful of fractionals I'd r highly recommend getting. This is one of them. Obviously, the Spinner note that I showed. Um, the, uh, uh, the Stanton note is another one. Anyway, this one here, one of the most popular... Uh, fractionals out there, the 50 cent featuring Lincoln. Not everybody knows every everybody else that's on the fractionals, but everybody does know who Lincoln is. That's what puts this one in such high demand. Um, so yeah, this one is number six on the list. 50 cent fourth issue fractional currency featuring Abraham Lincoln and of course that very well identifiable spinner signature. That's number six. Number five... For what this particular list is, the damage on this note really hurts. Um, what is this? This is an 1862 $5 note. Uh, the $5 note was the first note produced because there wasn't an, as much of a need for a $1 note with, uh, one, uh, with silver dollars being in play. We had trade dollars at that particular time. Um, I don't know a whole lot about coins, but I know we had silver dollars. So... Having silver dollars, the first denomination you'd be looking for then would be a $5 note, which is why they started with the $5 note, thus making this one of the first notes ever created. 1862 $5 legal tender. Pretty rough shape on this, but considering what it is, I had to have one. And with this list being notes that have Spinner's signature on it, well, there is Spinner's signature, and unfortunately this note has a tear right through it, so we're missing part of it. But that doesn't change the fact that this is still a real note from that time that did feature his signature. So that is number five. Number four. Let's go to a little bit better one. <laughs> Same year, 1862, $2 legal tender note. Uh, this one's in much better condition than that one. And this one, you can see everything is intact. Um, one of my favorite things about the, this particular series is this security feature right here where they've got one, two, and three. This being the $2 note, you can see that they highlighted the two. 
um, identifying it as the two, it implies that there was a $3 note in the works. And I've shown the, uh, the ideas for that particular note that were out there. The signatures are harder to see here because of the background, but you can see there is Spinner's signature right there. So that one is number four on the list, the 1862 $2 legal tender. Number three on the list. Well, I showed you the five, I showed you the two. Let's go with the one. The one's in really good shape, so I put that one first. Uh, this one's a 35. 1862 $1 legal tender. But once again, you can see that circle that I was talking about. This one, the one is highlighted versus on the two, where the two is highlighted. Just showing that little interesting thing on there because this one also has the three 1862 one dollar legal tender looking once again you can see spinner signature well, at least you can almost make it out because of the engraving on the back also there for anti-counterfeiting measures that is the spinner note from 1862 pretty cool back did i should even show the back of this one i don't even know but there's the back of that one as well i don't bring these out too often so i figure what the heck <laughs> And there's the five. So I've got the five, the two, and the one. Salmon P. Chase is pictured on that one. Number two on the list. Number two is my Lazy Deuce. Uh, this is from 18... This is before 1865 because this national currency predates when they put the charter numbers on. So this one does not have the charter number of this particular bank. Uh, you can look up the charter number and find out that it's 1472. Um, nationals, I've got many videos on national currencies, but basically what this meant was that uh, a person could a person could have a bank and the government would come by and determine whether or not that bank was solvent, if it could cover all of its debts. If the bank was in good shape, uh, they could be given a charter number, and that charter number would designate them as a national bank. Now, once they became a national bank, they could put money on deposit with the government and have these banknotes printed with their particular bank's name on it, showing who was backing the note. Uh, so that's the long, short version. And you're going to say, well, wait a second, these signatures here on the bottom, that's not who we're talking about because those are the signatures of the president of the bank. So why do I, why did this note make the list? This lazy deuce, here I'll show the back real quick, also on nationals, uh, they had the eagle on this side for the US and then whatever particular state or territory, this one is Rhode Island, uh, they had their seal on this side. So all of the backs are pretty different as well. But anyway, we were talking the signatures and when you look, you have the signature of the bank president, uh, but you don't have the signature of the treasurer of the United States. But you do. It's right here. Here are the two federal signatures. And down here is where you have the two bank signatures. You can see here, president. And what is this one? Come on, focus. Cashier. So, yeah. Even though this was a national bank note... Spinner still had his signature on it because it was still issued through the treasury. So that is number two. And yeah, I had to pull up my lazy deuce. <laughs> All right, number one on the list. Number one is my favorite note that I own that has Spinner's signature on it. It is my fractional, what is this, 1869, if I remember? Third issue, 50 cent Spinner, uh, specimen note and why is this one so cool first and foremost the condition is just impeccable uh the back of it you're gonna see is blank that's just sunlight coming through making it look translucent like that uh transparent whatever um the spinner note here what is so special about it other than it being a specimen that's spinner's real signature look at the ink you can see the rust ink uh, the rust from the black ink coming off of there, that's iron oxidization rust. <laughs> uh, that was part of the ink. That's why it turns color like that. You can see on the back the ink coming through the paper. Um, yeah, that's his actual signature. He held this note. He signed this note. What a cool piece of history.
I scooped this up in an auction. Uh, this goes for about 400 bucks or so. Should be more than that, in my opinion, especially in such a nice sheep. And uh, because people didn't realize this was A, a specimen, or B, an actual signed note, uh, I snagged this for like 100 bucks. So a great steal for me, and one of my truly favorite notes featuring not only Spinner, uh, but his signature, and it's not only his signature, it's his true autograph. So that's what I've got for you guys this week, top 10 notes with Spinner's signature. If you learn anything new this week, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like what you see and you want to see more, please subscribe. Love reading all your comments. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.